Next thing you have to ask is, when I talk about does your partner feel safe with you, I don't mean do they think you're going to rob them. Do they think you're going to abandon them in the middle of the highway somewhere? I mean, do they feel safe with you emotionally? Or do they think no matter what they do, you're going to judge them? How judgmental are you? Because if they associate you with judging them, trying to control them, trying to dictate to them, they're not going to have a good reaction to you. Whereas on the other hand, if they have the expectation that whatever they do, it's going to be okay with you, where they do something this way or that way, as long as it gets done, you're not going to judge it. It's kind of live and let live. You're okay with them doing what they do the way they do it, and they're okay with you doing what you do the way you do it. You just tend to accept each other. So how do you want to be reacted to? Like, here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Or, here comes my friend and lover. What is it you want them to see, anticipate, and respond to when they regard you? You need to ask yourself what you are inducing in them. So ask yourself what reaction you're pulling for. Are you judgmental? Are you controlling? Are you dictatorial? And if you are, they're going to associate negatives with you. The way to change that is change your interaction patterns. What would they do if you came home and you had not one critical thing to say? You didn't quiz them. You didn't go through the Spanish Inquisition about what he or she spent money on. You didn't go through the Spanish Inquisition about why they did something this way instead of that way, why they said this to their mother instead of that to their mother. Remembering that 80% of all questions are statements in disguise, when you start asking questions, well, why did you say this to your mother? Well, why did you let him do that? Well, why did you do... Those aren't questions. Those are judgments. They are pronouncements. Which is why I subtitled this series, How Much Fun Are You to Live With?, If you are constantly questioning, interrogating, judging, and attempting to control, then how much fun you live with? Not much. If your partner is used to and has a knee-jerk reaction to being judged, you're not much fun to live with. So if you come home and criticize your wife or your husband, your partner, for the way they manage your in-laws, they're not going to have much of a positive anticipation of interacting with you. Do you do that with your friends? Do you meet your friend for lunch and say, okay, so why did you say that to your husband? Why did you say that to your mother-in-law? Why did you let him do? If you do, you're not going to be having much company at lunch next week. You're going to be there by yourself because somebody's going to say, listen, I I don't want to go to lunch with that person. I don't want to spend time with them because they beat me up the whole time. I'd rather go get a peanut butter sandwich and sit on a bench, then go sit with this person. I just don't want to listen to it. I don't want to hear it. So what do you need to do? You need to resolve, if I want a good friend, I need to be a good friend. Now think about that. If I want my partner to be a good friend, then I need to be a good friend. And I want to live with a good friend. So I need to be a good friend. You get what you give. I strongly believe in the principle of reciprocity. We talked about that earlier. You get what you give. So the quality of a relationship is a function of the extent to which it is based on a solid underlying friendship. And I'm telling you, you need to assess how good of a friend you are being. Not how good of a friend your partner is being. Not how good of a friend your spouse is being. How good of a friend you are being. Are you judging? Are you criticizing? Are you questioning? Or are you being a good friend? And that's what I want you to focus on. Be a good friend. The first four minutes, remember I said the first four minutes, you come home, you do not talk about problems. How about making that the first eight minutes, the first 12 minutes? How about letting it set the tone and that's what you deal with? Now, can you do that all the time? Well, of course not. There are problems that you have to deal with. But if it defines your relationship, that doesn't work. Now, you're going to fold under pressure. I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, you're going to fold under pressure unless you do what I'm getting ready to tell you to do, which is going to seem really awkward. I want you to role play this situation. I want you to decide 
before you get with your partner the next time. Maybe you work outside the home. Maybe your partner works outside the home. Maybe you both work outside the home. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But when you're apart and you come back together, you need to script yourself. You need to have a do's and don't list. And you need to recognize what I've said before. You do not have to react to every poke you get. You don't have to react to every stimulus they throw out there. You can let it slide. So you need to script yourself. There are five fun things I'm going to talk about tonight, and I will not get off topic. I will not get off script. When I go home tonight, when I see my partner for the first time today, I'm going to talk about one, two, three, four, or five of these things. I'm going to tell a joke. I'm going to relate a funny story. I'm going to do something that keeps it positive. And if I have a problem, then we'll deal with it tomorrow. But today, I'm going to be a fun date. I'm going to be a good friend. I'm going to talk about something positive. And by the way, something positive doesn't mean talking about you. As I said, a person's most favorite topic is themselves. Focus on your partner. Find something about them to be interested in. Have them tell you a story. Have them regale you with tales of something. Be interested in them, their life, what they're doing, what's important to them. Be a good audience. If you want to be a good friend, be a good audience. Be an interested audience. Be an engaged audience. Be an eye contact, plugged in audience. It sounds simple. The formula for success in a relationship is the extent to which it's based on a solid underlying friendship. Well, that's not so easy because you may well have a well-entrenched pattern of not being a good friend. You may be in a really entrenched relationship being a problem solver, a problem partner, a judge, an inquisitor, a fault finder. You got to throw all that out and say, it may break my jaw not to say it, but I'm going to go home and I'm going to talk about fun stuff. And you say, well, Dr. Phil, that's fine. We may go bankrupt in the meantime. Well, you'll be happy and bankrupt. But decide you're going to be a good friend. Support your partner. Take your partner's side always. But what if they're wrong? Well, you can still support them. You can still be understanding. And maybe down the road, there's an opportunity to suggest a different approach. But if they're upset, if they feel like they've been hurt, somebody's treated them unfairly, take their side. Be understanding with them. The opportunity will present itself to authentically suggest modification. But be a supporter. I read a little book a long time ago called Balcony People by Joyce Landorf Heatherly. Talks about just what it says. Balcony people. We all have, want, need people in our balcony. People that no matter what we do, there's just some people that are just always in your balcony cheering you on. You can just count on them. They're just always going to be there. We all need balcony people. Be one of your partner's balcony people. Have their back. Take their side. Be their encourager. Do friends tell each other the truth? Yes, they do. But there's a difference between being genuine and being brutally honest. You remember us talking about that. Genuine conveys the message. Brutally honest conveys the message without consideration for the impact of the way you convey it, the timing of when you convey it. So the first part of this relationship formula is success depends on a solid underlying friendship. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what the second part is. You have to be good friends. And if you don't know how to be a good friend, you need to stop and think about how to be a good friend. 